What's going on, everyone? I'm Tramel Thompson, and welcome to Progressive Action News. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our new news platform where we will be covering community news, local news, U.S. news, global news. We will be talking about politics, economics, labor, transportation, sports. As you can see at the bottom of our screen, we have a text ticker that have real time sports news as we are live right now. I'm so excited to um, share my journey with you guys. And we just trying to bring the best information um, forward. And, and what's going to make this platform so special is that we're going to be delivering the news in 10, 15 minutes. No longer than 15 minutes. Probably no longer than 10 minutes. But we're going to deliver the news in a short time um, frame because we know that you guys are busy and you have a lot going on, and we, you want to get as much information as possible, and we want to give you as much information as possible. Now, as you can see, also at the bottom of the screen, it says Mayor Eric Adams' subway plan. Now, we got, we're not going to take too much of your time. Let's jump straight into the video. We got so used to being dysfunctional that it became the normality. Well, I'm not a dysfunctional mayor. And I don't pretend that a problem doesn't exist. We identify, we fix problems, we get stuff done. That's what my administration is going to be about. We enforce these elements in these rules. No more smoking, no more doing drugs, no more sleeping, no more doing barbecues on the subway system, no more just doing whatever you want. No, those days are over. Swipe your Metro card, ride the system, get off at your destination. That's what this administration is saying. We're going to protect our, protect our transit riders and protect those who are, are, are in need of care. Now, it seems as if Eric Adams has laid down the law, no pun intended, laid down the law. Zero exceptions, no more. He said barbecues, smoking, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And he said that there are rules to follow in the subway. And he is correct. Now, Mayor Adams' plan went into effect on President's Day Monday. Now, as of today, there has not been no sightings of the homeless being removed, EDPs being removed, shopping carts, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff being removed from the subways. Now, let's put things into perspective of as far as what's going down in the subways. We have homelessness. We have um, EDPs. Now, let me break that down for you guys real quick. Not every EDP is homeless, and not every homeless person is an EDP. The issues in the subway is multi-layered. They've, they've, they've been going on for decades, and now someone has came and said enough is enough. Now, um, transit workers already know that the crime in the subways are skyrocketing. Forget about what the uh, MTA CEO says and all these politicians who casually ride the subway, not like the everyday citizen and not like the workers. The workers spend eight to 10 hours a day in the subways. And we see a lot of things that the riding public um, don't see every day. And transit workers know that the subways are not safe. Um, we have crime. We have drug use. We have um, people getting assaulted, stabbed, uh, uh, robbed, um, all types of crimes. Um, a few months ago, we had a conductor get shot in the face with a BB gun. So what Mayor Eric Adams said, it was sounded good. Sounded very good, but will it work? I want to know from you guys, right down in the comments, do you think Mayor Eric Adams' 
subway plan will work. Me personally, I'm going to remain optimistic, and I hope it do work because the riding public deserve a safe, clean subway. The workers um, in the subway deserve a clean, safe subway. It has become so dangerous in the subways that transit workers sometimes have to pray that they make it home. That's how serious it has become in the subways for the workers. You would think that, you know, we were firefighters or police officers. Never in a million years I would think that transportation, you have to pray that you will make it home the same way that you left your home. Now, as I said earlier, um, the, the problems in the subways are multi-layered. They've been going on for a while. We want this to work. Um, we want a safe, clean subway. Um, we don't want to feel threatened when we come to work and all this other stuff. And we are hoping, 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 hoping that it worked. But once again, um, if you feel, let us know how you feel with the plan work. Write down in the comments. Now, there's something else I want to get into. The uh, MTA had a Black History Month celebration in which um, the chief of diversity, I believe, um, Michael Gardner, uh, said something historically inaccurate. But let's get into the video and we'll discuss it in a few. Great, great. And Black History Month should be celebrated because black people in this country, we've been here since 1619 and we've been catching hell. But guess what? We are still standing. We were still... Now, Michael Gardner said that black people been here since 1619. Now, before I get into that, just want to give you guys um, an idea. Last Friday, the MTA had a Black History Month celebration via Zoom in which they had the uh, lieutenant governor come out and speak. Um, they had uh, a musician there, uh, the CEO, uh, Jan Oliba, he spoke. And I was very disappointed um, what Jan Oliba decided to do um, during Black History Month. He decided to spend a lot of that time talking about service. He would not do that during anyone else cultural celebration, talking about service instead of honoring the month or the week or the culture or whatever it may be. He did not honor, he mentioned one person, but I felt that it was, it was in poor taste for him to strictly talk about um, service there. But back to Mr. Gardner and his 1619 um, saying that that's when black people um, first came to this to this country. Now I'm going to put something on the screen. This guy on the screen. This is Juan Garrido. Now Juan Garrido became the first documented black person to arrive in what become the U.S. when he accompanied Juan Ponce de Leon in search of guess what, the Fountain of Youth. Now I want to make something clear. Um, black people been in this country before 1619. Human cargo of black people came into this country in the form of chattel slavery in 1619 from the shores of Africa. Now, it is historically incorrect for um, someone to say when we first got here in 1619, um, Juan Garrido and Juan Ponce de Leon in search of the fountain of youth, youth that happened in 1513, and, um, which was known as Florida, St. Augustine, Florida. And this happened before the U.S. was even the U.S. So black people been on this continent before 1619. It's historically incorrect. And the reason why this hurt us so much is because we have people like Mr. Gardner, and I know he didn't mean no harm, but he didn't do his research either. And we can't expect them to respect our history if we don't know our history. Thanks for tuning in to Progressive Action TV. We catch you guys soon. Peace.